Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. We're going to be following up on my $200 defensive gun challenge with the Taurus G2S. So, um, early this year, Linda issued a challenge. Buy the best defensive gun you can for $200 new in box. And I went over the various options. There's a video about that, of course, which you can find easily enough and selected the Charles G2S, which cost $199 as it came. And it arrived with two magazines, and um, the gun works. And I was pretty favorably impressed. So I kept shooting it and shooting it and shooting it, <laughs> and it kept working and working and working. Um, after, I don't know, 700 rounds or so, it um, almost failed to go into battery once. And that's 700 rounds without cleaning. So I cleaned it and I've put at least another 500 to 700 rounds through it. I sort of lost track. But the round count on this gun is now well over, well over a thousand rounds, maybe as many as 1400. And um, it keeps working. I have run six, seven different types of defensive loads through it, including uh, 90 grain plus P extreme defenders, federal punch hollow points, uh, some Winchester stuff. I've ran bullet weights from 90 grains to 147 grains, and the gun does not choke on anything. Let's go to the tabletop now because this gun looks rather different than when it started. So the first real change to this gun was the addition of the Olight, which a friend of mine gave me and I put it on this gun because it's a very compact light and it fits. Um, I like the Olight and since I don't plan on shorting out a car battery with it, I'm not real worried about it exploding. And it's not too bright. A lot of weapon lights these days are just too bright. Uh, the second change to the gun was when the polymer front sight um, got dinged on something somehow. And it was not, as it turns out, exceptionally durable, and it was damaged. Uh, fortunately, I have a friend who always changes the sights on her Glocks, and she had a Glock spare front sight. These are technically interchangeable with Glock front sights. It took very minor fitting, and I actually had to modify the screw on the Glock a little bit because there was no room to put a wrench on it inside this particular gun, so I cut a screwdriver slot in it and just drove it in with a screwdriver. And that works very well. And um, the sights are now a three-dot sight picture. And wonder of wonder, miracles of miracles, if you line up the three dots, it hits to point of aim. Amazing. Uh, the rear sight is adjustable for both height and windage, but I have never needed to adjust it. Uh, addressing the elephant in the room, you can see that this is not the standard stock checkering, or I mean, uh, texturing. Uh, now, the stock texturing was adequate, but um, my friend Leah had a surplus wood burner and gave it to me so I could practice texturing polymer. And um, I thought, what better to check, check to, excuse me, what better to learn how to do it on than a cheap gun. And so I used this five millimeter Maltese cross point and produced a very nice texture, which I sanded until it was not too aggressive. I carried the pattern right onto the mag bases, which are also polymer. And um, because they, that gives me just barely a three finger grip on the gun. So I figured it should be textured too. And the texture I think looks pretty good and is not too aggressive, but it's extremely grippy. In my test firing, uh, my thumb did not become dislodged from the thumb pad. And uh, I was very pleased with that. So that's the gun as it stands. I should probably clean it again since it's had another, you know, six, seven hundred rounds through it. And, um, but we'll get to that. 
the trigger is interesting. So at first blush, this seems like a standard striker fire double action trigger pull. And indeed, after you, when it resets, if the slide has not worked, you get a full double action trigger pull. But if the slide resets, it's a single action trigger pull. So when you load it, this is a single action auto. So now the safety makes a whole lot more sense than it did to me initially, because I just don't feel this is adequate for a single action auto. And um, it seemed to me that the trigger pull had improved over the last thousand plus rounds. So I measured it. And the trigger now breaks at three pounds. And while it is striker squishy, it, it's really quite good for a striker fired pistol. And the reset is reasonably short. It's not great, it's not bad, it's reasonable. And um, it's quite easy to fire the gun rapidly with reasonable accuracy at defensive ranges, as you saw in the video. And, um, you know, it's a $200 gun, but having said that, it's awfully nice for a $200 gun. Um, when I took it apart in the original video, the internal machining is all quite nice looking. So I have to say, um, I am impressed. Oh, and yes, the gun came with two magazines for 200 bucks. Not bad. I'm not the biggest fan of modern striker fired guns. Um, they're great. They work good. They're fine. Um, the trigger is not really to my taste, but it's fine. And um, I did not expect to like this, a $200 gun with, you know, seven plus one capacity. And I did. Um, it's nice to shoot. Some people will find it snappy. I'm a gorilla, so I don't. Um, but it just works and works and works, and it is reasonably accurate for its job. Um, it's very easy to keep all the shots of any brand, type, or weight of ammo in a three-inch circle at seven yards, which, which is good enough. And um, it's got a lot of features for 200 bucks. The fully adjustable rear sight is polymer, but it's a fully adjustable rear sight. The interchangeability of sights with minimal fitting with Glock sights is a plus. And um, now that I've got the texture on it, I like it even better. I have to tell you, this gun has replaced my beloved um, Airweight Chief Special Smith & Wesson for occasional pocket carry because it's just been that good and I can shoot it better and faster than the J-Way Air or the Airweight J-Frame. Would I recommend it? I have a sample size of one, but based on my experience and a lot of reviews on YouTube, I would say for 200 bucks or even for 225 or 250 bucks, it's a good choice. So, on that bombshell, which surprises, I am sure, exactly no one, that's it for this update. Um, if I have any problems with this in the future, I'll let you know, and I'll let you know how Taurus's notoriously um, irregular customer service does for me. But for now, that's probably the last video dedicated to this gun. And um, as experiments go, I have to say this is a resounding success. So, if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. I'd also like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters. All of this costs money, ammunition, reloading components, guns, everything. 
and your contributions help more than you know. I'd also like to say a word of thanks to channel benefactors who have contributed ammunition, parts, uh, provided guns for me to show you and talk to you about, and um, just a whole lot of help in all kinds of different ways. So, I hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.